many people here today. So this is like the first tour group. We got another tour group. Here's Kevin. Say hi, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> So we got another tour group coming in here right now, right? We sure do. Okay, so, so we'll, welcome to our open house event. That's awesome. How many people we got coming in so far? Uh, we've got 30 in the first educational tour, and then we'll have another 30 on the second, um, okay. and then probably another 60 folks um, for the buyer's uh, open house where we open the door um, and stroll through the facility and purchase anything that you'd like out of out of our coral raceways and fish systems. It's awesome. It's going to be a great day. Yeah. We got this guy. We all know this hey, guy. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Here we are, a week later, November 11th. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to my nephew. He's the big six today. Ooh. He's got the coolest birthday. Think about it, 11, 11, 11. So, nice. happy birthday, man. Hope you're having fun back there in Neshota. So this gives you guys kind of a sneak peek as to our weather situation. Hi. Say hi. So, obviously we got a little snow last night and here's, a, here's the second group coming in. We got a lot of great people. There's Michelle in the front. She's our uh, merchandise merchandise uh, manager. I'll move out of the way. I'll be a gentleman. And I'll yeah. Be a gentleman. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Good morning. Hey, what? Can we go this way. Oh, okay. This way, people. Say hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Good. Welcome. Hi there. Hi there. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> I have no problem Hi there. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the open house. Good morning. We're going to take you guys along like you're part of the tour. Show the large geo. Yeah, I think we'll get to the large geo, won't we, Eric? We will. Who's asking? Uh, Elizabeth. Liz? Yeah. From the show? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember. Liz. King yeah. and Queen Cichlid? That's right. King and Queen Cichlid. All right. How you doing? Yeah, hang in there. We're going to show oh, a little later. Now, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, we'll get to the large geo for sure. We're, we're holding him for you. <laughs> if you're interested. If you're still interested. Again, we started, uh, we quickly expanded this building in 2007, again in 2010, and then again last year. So we have a total of about 30,000 gallons in our facility here, um, and it's filtered by some pretty high-tech equipment. So this is our, our main filter room right here. Um, what you see here, this big gray tower in the middle, it's called a foam fractionator or protein skimmer. And what uh, protein skimmers are called? Um, a, a carbonate and, and uh, buffer and calcium supplement. 
but we choose not to do that. It gets pretty costly. So how calcium reactors work is water flows through them very slowly, and we actually inject carbon dioxide into that big chamber. And what the CO2 does, or carbon dioxide does, it actually drops the pH inside the calcium reactor itself so that it's below 7 and it's acidic. And that acidic water will slowly um, decompose the coral media, which in turn provides naturally calcium and other elements, uh, stabilizing the alkalinity for the forest as well. The entire facility here is um, on a backup generator. We have 130 kilowatts on the generator outside. We've got a lot of go off offline here in the spring and in the fall sometimes. So you know, it's important that we can run independently off of our current power grid So again, it's off natural gas from WPS, so we can run this building for weeks as long as we have gas supply um, from, from our, you know, our local company. So what's critical for coral growth? There's a few things. Number one is primarily a stable water chemistry. And we can do that by this high-tech filtration equipment. And we also do that by utilizing water changes. We use a lot of salt in our building here. Um, we actually have our own live aquarium professional reef salt that we launched a few months ago. Um, we've developed this salt over the course of this year. And we're really proud of, the, uh, of this salt. It's very stable salt to utilize in the most advanced reef aquariums, or even salt water for some of so anybody that's been here before, we have these big storage tanks up top and a little big tank over in the corner. They're actually behind this wall now. Um, we have uh, 12 foot tall by 8 feet diameter, 2,000 gallon holding tanks. So again, we mix up about 8,000 gallons a week of salt water. So those are in, uh, stored in those two big vats behind this wall. We have another big storage vat that contains 2,000 gallons of what's called RO water, the reverse osmosis water. So if you have a reef aquarium at your house, you know, tap water works okay. Um, we always suggest everyone to utilize what's called reverse osmosis, and the reason for that is it strips out proteins and uh, nitrates and phosphates and other, you know, organics out of the water. Uh, we run that, that RO water through what's called the deionization resin cartridges, and our, our, by doing so, they can produce water at a zero total dissolved solids. And you might ask, well, why do you want water that's that pure. And the reason for that is it helps reduce algae growth in our coral raceways, and it also um, will not impede coral growth. So high levels of phosphate, high levels of nitrates, sometimes uh, prohibits um, coral growth. So by, by utilizing you know, no nitrate, no phosphate, we have a lot better ability to grow corals much faster. So along with the stable water chemistry, corals also need proper water flow. So we utilize that by these big pumps that are on the on the ground there. Uh, we've got a two horsepower pump that runs on the rows, and a one and a half horsepower pump which actually runs our grow out coral vats that are actually upstairs. There's one more pump that is called a venturi pump, and that venturi pump, what it does is it sucks in air as well as ozone and injects it inside that protein skin. So you'll see there's there's some foam that's accumulating at the top. That foam accumulates from that venturi process where we're, you know, again, taking air and ozone and injecting it into the water column. And what that does is it makes really fine micro bubbles, and that will in turn stick the proteins and amino acids and they can be stripped out of the water column. We also have, again, flow is critical. We have water switching devices on the wall. So every 15 minutes, the water switches from one direction in our coral raceways to the flow in the other direction after minutes and that way we're alternating the water flow inside each of our coral reef ways. What happens if you don't do that, oftentimes corals will grow in one direction. So you know, we, we grow a lot of aquaporic coral in this building, which are branching stony corals. Um, and when water flows in one direction, they tend to grow in one direction as well. So that really helps us out. The last critical piece of equipment that we have in here is we electronically monitor the water chemistry on all of our, our raceways in the building. So we have 11 independent holding or, or life support systems for our animals in the building. And each one is uh, electronically controlled. We'll monitor electronically the pH, the redox potential, and the temperature. And that information is actually sent to an IP switch so that we can log in, we can check parameters, uh, we can make adjustments if we need to. Uh, and, 
it also sends alarms to our, our mobile phones when one of the one of the parameters falls outside of the set points that we have. So again, it goes back to the the importance that we have in here of, of maintaining these animals in the healthiest way. Um, so all this equipment really helps us do that, helps us achieve um, great holding and habitat systems for our animals. So does anybody have any questions about the filtration system? Anybody have a reef aquarium? Yeah? Excellent. Well, I'll walk you through here. Um, well, we're going to get into the coral farm, and it's, if you guys can stay in a, a tight group, I can give a brief explanation of the different raceways and lighting technology that we use. And then you guys can feel free to walk around and, and interact with the folks and check out all the animals. Ian. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> you want to see a cool clownfish? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Isn't that an anemone? Oh, he did. There he is. Very cool. All right, let's get back to the tour group. so that we can actually quarantine a condition that prior to offering them for sale. It's not uncommon in the, in the, the fish industry for many people to kind of play hot potato with the animals. Um, they, you know, maybe kind of like the cut flower or produce mentality. We want to take the exact opposite approach. Our goal is that you're very successful with the animals that you purchase from, from Live Aquaria. So what we do is bring those guys, bring the animals in here, and again, we'll quarantine a condition them prior to offering them for sale. If it's coral, we have a small polyp stony coral quarantine area, which is in that back room back there. And that's where also our culture, aquaculture product is going to remain. again so that we can show people the exact animals that we're purchasing and the diver's den store helps us do that you know you know exactly what you're buying and you, you know what color it is you know what size it is you know exactly how it looks so we're really proud of this tank behind us here this is our our show tank it's a 300 gallon small polyp stony coral aquarium so everything that's colored in that tank is actually alive so those are the, the acropora corals and montimora corals at the bottom um, again, they're hard calcium carbonate skeleton corals, and they need good water flow, stable water chemistry, and most importantly, good light. Um, corals are, most corals are photosynthetic in that they require good light. You know, corals are animals. They have a very, they have a mouth and a simple digestive tract. However, they can take chlorophyll like plants do, so they really require intense lighting for them to grow. When we started this building back in 2005, we had 87 400 watt metal halide lamps. This is a metal halide lamp right here. They're, they get really hot. Um, they consume a lot of electricity, and the light bulbs contain mercury. So not really ideal for from an environmental perspective. We've converted over um, to about 70 of these Ecotech Green Radeon LED lights. So LED lighting technology, you guys see that at you know, Home Depot and Lowe's and wherever you go. A lot of that stuff you may use in your home. Um, there's applications for aquariums, which is, which is fantastic. Um, 
we really love these Ecotech Marine lights because they're very, very powerful and that they're highly tunable and adjustable. So all of these light pendants are actually um, connected to what's called a reef link, and that's connected to our wireless router. So we can log on to any of these lights and change the duration, the intensity, the spectrum of light, which is, which is really awesome for us because we grow a variety of corals in our building, and not all corals need, say, white light or blue light. So it really helps us um, fine-tune the lighting spectrum for the animals that we're actually growing in the building. You'll notice some of these lights are on moving light rails. Um, the, the fixed position, position lights here are used for photography. All the other lights are on these moving light rails that are main coral raceways. And the reason that we do that is we can utilize less lighting pendants over these coral raceways and still provide the proper um, spread and duration and intensity of light for the we kind of stole that technology from horticulture. It's very popular and very common for um, nurseries and so forth to use moving light rails. But back to these LEDs, um, there's actually seven different lighting channels in this LED light right here. Um, any, anywhere from cyan to purple to blue to white to red to green. Um, so again, highly tunable and highly adjustable. And the, most and the biggest benefit of LEDs in this building is they last about 10 years. And Ecotech is a great company where you can actually upgrade. So as, as new companies you know, develop different types of LEDs, um, usually you can just replace these LED pumps and these lights uh, to make it much easier and, and more cost effective for you in your, in your home aquarium. So I'll show you our fish systems. Um, you know, we're really known for the, the animals, especially the fish that we, we bring in house here. Last year, we started uh, to bring in a bunch of freshwater fish as well, so we can offer them in our diver's den store. And anything that's over in the, the left corner that's got black, like a black canopy and sliding doors, those are all of our freshwater fish. And then our, our marine fish are in our quarantine system there, and our main fish system here, and then in the diver's den system, which is right through that wall. So I'll run you this way and show you some of that. Going, Eric. It's going well. So Kevin was talking about all the metal halide lighting, the LED lights. We were talking the other day. I won't give you a dollar amount, but I asked Kevin. I said, "How much is our monthly bill here?" And uh, he said, "Well, let me tell you this. I'll break it down by day. So basically, what I pay a month at home for my electric bill is what we pay a day here." I can't imagine what it would have been if we've been on old tech. That's yeah, awesome. So that's a lot of electricity. It's our clownfish system here. Basically, it's a suspended. Sorry about the noise, everyone. We'll try to get Kevin to be this. What happens is we naturally develop nitrifying bacteria on that gravel. That nitrifying bacteria will break ammonia down into nitrites. And then break nitrates down into nitrates with the much oxygen. I think you guys have a little tour around the place here. Again, this system right here is our saltwater quarantine system. Again, it's always very, very simple. Um, or even glowfish, they're, they're healthy. 
I encourage you guys to walk walk down that row, even if you're not in fresh or in the freshwater fish. There's some really awesome captain bred stingrays that we have from, from Angel that are they're called Leopoldi stingray and they're black with these, with these really bright yellow spots. Really, really cool. Fish, so. If you have any questions at all today, anybody that's wearing a black shirt is, is our, our partners that work in the coral farm. They're more than happy to, to help you out in one on one and uh, answer questions that you may have. And enjoy yourself and walk around. Thank you guys. This is one body of water. It is. So, so it's all shared. It's all shared. So that's why you have to have food. Let me, I'll walk you around and show you. All right, so what do you got here? Go, what we, I got, I got something for Elizabeth and Scott uh, from King and Queen Cichlid. We're gonna walk down here. We're getting there. So on the way, we'll point out our freshwater stingrays again. These guys are, yeah, this is one of our Divers Den deep dive episodes. These guys are captive bred. Uh, the brown and chocolate ones, these are pearl stingrays. Black and whites are Leopold eyes. And being captive bred, they came in super healthy. Feeding them was not an issue. They love their mice shrimp. They love their bloodworms. And they're very inquisitive and interesting. So we're getting there. We got a cool deep fish in this tank. Um, I'll show you our first one. It's our sailfin marbled catfish. I like to call him Mr. Whiskers for good oh, reason. Oh, yeah. He is awesome. We had one of these a couple months ago and he sold right away. This guy is available on the website. I believe he is about eight or nine inches. But again, look at those whiskers. So he's an ambush predator. He's gonna sit over a rock or a stump and, and wave those whiskers out there with barbels. And when a fish swims by that's small enough for him to eat, he's gonna take it out. Yeah, he's a gorgeous fish. And we got a lot of armored cats and portable cats. So Liz, this one's for you. There he is. That's our Geophagus, or Nemesis. He's beautiful. Look at the trailers on his ventral fins. And his dorsal and tail fin streamers are coming back as well. We've had him a couple weeks now, and I would say he is about a foot long. I've never seen a Geophagus, or Nemesis this big. It's a beautiful fish. Just gorgeous. And here we've got a, a golden spot Placostomus. He kind of pales in comparison to the golden pleco we saw at the show last week, oh, but he's yeah. still beautiful. And then in back, let me rouse this guy out. We have an Adonis pleco. He doesn't want to wake up. <laughs> we see you back there. He's Come coming around. Yeah. Come on, buddy. The thing about working with live animals, they don't always cooperate. So this guy's got a lot of growing to do. He's one of the biggest placostomists. They can get up to 39, 40 inches. And as juveniles, they have a lot of white spots. He's kind of transitioning. And he's like, all right, I'm done. These Parkinsonized rainbows are beautiful too. Nice and big. Nice sabron, but there's the star of the show today. That's our Geophagus ornamentus. And then up top, Ian, we've got some other geos. These are Geo Girapari. Sometimes we call them earth eaters. They like to sift the gravel and pull food and vegetation out. They're in with some goiter rainbows. We've got some Bosmani rainbows next door. Here's some Comica rainbows. And then let's turn around. Uh, we do keep some African cichlids in house. Usually we don't alter the water, but for the African cichlids we do raise the pH. We like it between 7.8 and 8.4. So we've got some Tropius morii. These will get more red. We've got some Gelidocromus marlierii. We were focusing on these last week. They had a big one down at the aquatic experience. We've got a pretty Aluna car down here. It's a ruby red peacock. In with the Lelupai. Got some Malawi sand divers. And they call them sand divers for good reason. They like to bury right down into the sand. 
They probably won't do it today. <laughs> Got a nice front Tosa next door. It's a character. It is. It is fun. I love it. All right, let's go around to the other side. Oh, I think we should show them this discus here first. So these are some beautiful blue diamond discus. We got these in this week. They'll be on the website in a couple weeks, but they're gorgeous. They came in healthy. They're nice and thick. Yeah, Excuse us, folks. Yeah. So again, we've got some more discus up here. We've got some red marlboros, yellow marlboros, uh, snow white. Red turquoise. Got some little pigeon bloods. And then let's go downtown here, Ian. We got a beautiful gold Severum. We saw a lot of these at the show last week. Of course, I'm partial to this one. Look at the girth on this one. Just a beautiful fish, very healthy, a lot of red in the face. Looks like we got a catfish in here. See if we can get them out. There he goes. Pretty cat. Beautiful. Ornate Pim. We've got some more pigeon bloods in here. Got some rose red discus. These are very pretty. And again, more discus. goldfish lovers out there. We, we have started carrying goldfish. We've got everything from telescopes to lion heads. These guys are great. We've got red cap arandas and orange arandas. We've got some more geophagus in here. This is the wine miller eye. Great size to get them at, about three and a half, four inches. Great peaceful cichlid, community type cichlid. This guy's pretty neat. We have a black and white spatula cara down here. Zebra lace angels. And more geophagus next door. These are altifrons. These get gorgeous too. We've got some neat stuff in salt water I'd like to show. Let's get going to salt water too. All right. So these guys came in earlier this week. These are skeletal eels, type of gymnothorax, the mores. It's a little baby one in there. And we feed our eels anything from krill to silver sides. These are some of my favorite up here. We've got red leaf fish. So they're an ambush predator. They sit and they kind of move back and forth with the waves and the current. And when the unsuspecting shrimp or small damsel swim by, they just suck it right up. And they, they are scorpion fish, so their top dorsal spines are venomous if you were to step on them. Watch out for the, the stools here. <laughs> so uh, we, we just love doing this, and we do this by uh, iPad, iPhone. And you know what else we've got? We've got iFarm, Ian <laughs> Farm. So the dynamic duo. The dynamic duo. Uh, this was our episode of uh, Divers Deep Den yesterday, our epaulette sharks. I guess they're taking a nap today. Yeah. They're chilling. They are chilling. So this whole area here is our quarantine area, and my co-worker John is responsible for all of this. So we have fish come in daily. The other day, John and I had a shipment of 78 boxes. 50 of those fish boxes were his. I had 26, so John is constantly busy here. He really works his tail off, so hats off to John. Um, and the fish stay here typically two weeks. We have a lower salinity, so that helps ward off parasites and protozoa. And when everybody's feeding well and looking good, then we move them over to the, Q, uh, the main systems. In the main systems, we do have a little bit of copper sulfate in there just to make sure everybody's well. And by the time they get to Diver's Den on the website, they're in regular water. So I don't know if you showed everybody this one yet. Nope. This guy is one of my all-time oh, favorites. Yeah. Let me get myself an, out of the picture here. This guy is an ornate trunk fish. Yeah. This is a male. You can see in the background there's a juvenile. Oh yeah. And another oddball. 
This is the first time I've ever seen one of these. We'll bring them up. This is a pine cone fish. I've only seen these in books. So talk about an odd couple. <laughs> it's a great couple of fish dab together. One looks like a pineapple and the other looks like a hand grenade. <laughs> Just great stuff. Here he's going back around. Yeah, I love the I love the coloration. It's awesome. So I would imagine both of these will be on the website within a couple weeks. So being up here, we've got a weedy scorpion fish, cousin of the leaf fish, and look at him. He is just incredible. Look at all the growths and bumps and things on him. And again, we're talking about the ambush predator. He blends right in with the coral, and he just waits for the fish to come by or shrimp, and he gulps them up. They rip open their mouth so fast it creates a vacuum and just draws them in. Very cool. So we've got a beautiful blue face. And these are one of my favorites too. Next to we've got a golden puffer. And they look like puppy dogs. I guess he's not too happy with us here. He's, he's <laughs> like, giving us his back Yeah, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Hey. So this guy will make a great pet someday. And they're great because you can have them with big triggers, groupers, things like that. Here we've got an Eschmeyer scorpion fish. Kind of a reddish purple face, although he looks orange in here with his piece of coral. He's almost got a Fu Manchu mustache. I love it. Reminds me of all the hipsters back in Bayview, Wisconsin that like to wax their mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Another puffer, this is a scribble mapa puffer. Got a nice juvenile emperor. He's in his juvenile phase. If we've got an adult, I'll try to pull that out. And over here, oh, I think they moved up. Here he is. This is the biggest copper banded butterfly I have ever seen. He's gorgeous. These guys are great in your reef tank. They'll take care of your aptasia. It's just a beautiful fish. Oh, Ian, I found an adult emperor. Yeah. So let's pan back to the juvenile. So there's the juvenile, for those of you who are just getting into saltwater fish. And then we've got an adult down here, so they transition. So here's an adult Imperator. Just a beautiful fish. Looks very regal. Yeah, he's not happy with us either. <laughs> uh, here's another oddball. These are great too. This is a tassel file fish. And they blend in with the sargassum and weeds. Great party fish. This is definitely an entry level, beginner level fish. And we did just had this on our Facebook page, I believe, right? Did we? Yeah. I think we did. It's possible. Give that our son on my Instagram. Right here. We've got some beautiful flame back angels in here. Yeah, real quick, guys. Um, if you're new to the Live Aquaria or, or you know, are just learning about us, um, subscribe to our Facebook page or Instagram page and you know, you'll see all the live streams we'll do, and as well as the uh, any really unique divers and items that we uh, we offer up. Let's show everybody our clownfish system. We've got a few clownfish over here that are residents. Yeah, we got kind of a sneak peek at this earlier. Okay. Did Kevin talk about the McCulloch Eye clownfish? Well, I think I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it now. So I believe we've had these since 2007. And Kevin was the first person to get these to breed in captivity, which is pretty cool. So what we were doing initially is once they would spawn on the plates, they would send the eggs down to our friends at ORA and they would hatch them out for us. So these guys are old, crusty, and beat up, but you know what? They're icons here in the coral yeah. farm. And Alex, thank you for uh, thank you for the recent order. That's awesome. I'll, uh, let's take a look at something that I think would make Tim the Tool Man proud. Tim the Tool Man. <laughs> yeah. So here's our, our generator out here. So, Woo! yeah, it's talk like about 20 a, degrees. Talk about a juxtaposition. You know? So, this should give you guys kind of a weird. We're here in God's country. Like, yeah, there's that, and then there's this. That's right. 
So this puppy is 130,000 kilowatts. It's a Cummings generator. And like Kevin said earlier, as long as we have natural gas to supply it, this thing will just keep running and running and running. So it's our backup heart here at the coral farm. It's a snowball quick. Oh boy. <laughs> it's crazy. It is. All right, let's go back inside. All right. All right. Yeah, we keep the temperature here in the coral farm about 76 to 78 degrees. We got some cool freshwater fish I'd like to show you here. We just got these guys in the other day for, for all you Bashir fans and Politeris fans out there. These are Lepredi. And if you look at them, they still have their external gills, which is so cool. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in these, they are about three to three and a half inches right now. We've got three of them. We'll more back there. Okay. We'll probably keep them another week and then put them up on the website maybe at the end of next week and shortly thereafter. But you know, talk cool. about a living fossil. I yeah. think these guys date back to the Cretaceous period. That's awesome. And next door, we've Ooh. got a magma flower horn. So we saw a lot of these last week down at the uh, Aquatic Experience. These things are phenomenal. And look, at he just beds like a dog. Yeah. He's got some gorgeous color. He's like, what, no food? I'm out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we literally will jump out of the water for food when we come around to feed him. Yeah, he's a beautiful fish. So if you want a personable cichlid, that's your fish. And we've got everything else from bettas. got little cichlids. I'm going to get that bed Whoop. Sorry, guys. Tight, tight quarters. This one's beautiful down here, too. Oh, yeah. This guy's oh, like yeah. teal. That's a beautiful battle. All right, so what is wanted, it? We had a request to show the main system. All to right, do that real quick. let's do that. Yeah, just send us your request and we'll show you around where we can. So after the fish come out of quarantine, we acclimate them, which means we, we slowly raise the salinity that they're in. We can come over here and they'll stay over here for another week or two and then we shoot them and put them on diver's deck. This is a neat trigger up here. So here we've got an adult blue line trigger. We apologize for the lighting in here. These tanks have seen a lot of use. Next door we've got a beautiful Achilles tank. Undulated trigger back there. Hardy, but not always the friendliest. They'll live forever. Another blue line. Got a cute little stars and stripes puffer down here. I love the puffers. Got a mimic saddle puffer. We've got a marine betta behind him. Different tanks and butterflies down here. And these are interesting. We've got long fin clownfish up here. And again, most of our clowns come from ORA, which is great because they're captive bred. Being captive bred, they're raised in an aquarium. They're used to the aquarium food. They usually do very, very well. I'm gonna see if we have any seahorses. I know people always ask about those. Yeah, and we should take a look at the uh, some of the coral race race too. Okay, we will. Here we go. Oh, yeah, these are seahorses. So again, these are from ORA. They're lime seahorses. They're in the main system. We have a, we have a resident seahorse expert, Shasta. She does a great job. She actually breeds her own seahorses at home. She's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to seahorses. So kudos to Shasta. I want to take a quick minute to thank everybody for tuning into our live stream. This is our last open house of 2017. So we're taking you behind the scenes and uh, helping people that otherwise couldn't make the trip uh, be part of the conversation. So here's some equipment. This is a giant UV sterilizer. People in salt water are familiar with sterilizers. This has seven 110 watt bulbs in it. I don't know what the contact time is, but I'm sure it's pretty decent. And again, we've got our protein skimmer that's taller than me. How tall are you? 
<laughs> I'm six, and you got four inches. I'm six right four, so. so. I think this is probably what seven and a half oh, feet tall. Oh, yeah, got to be over seven. Feet. And it does some serious volume. So let's take a look at some corals, Ian. All right. So we'll try to get around to all the different weight raceways, but we, we've got everything from hammer corals in here. We've got some fish in there because some of the fish help with the algae. We've got some torch corals down there. We had a question from Jonathan. Do you know the temperature? Do you know the temperature to keep the seahorses at? I believe, like everything else, we try to keep them about 76 to 78 degrees. Okay. So we've got some slime corals in here. We've got some meat corals. Open brain. You can see if you can get a, a shot of this oh, yeah. gem tang. It's probably one of our most expensive fish we have in right now. They go anywhere from 1800 to 2400 um, and they're so expensive because the divers have to, go, have to go to such extreme depths to collect them. Beautiful. And then bring them up slowly. So we've got some Ganya Pora back there. So here we have all sorts of Zoanthids and mushrooms. So again, for everybody at home, we have three raceways or three rows of bats and eight bats in each row. Uh, I think Kevin may have touched on it earlier. We have approximately 30,000 30, gallons of salt water that flows through the facility. Pretty impressive stuff. Hey, speaking of There's Kevin, what's up, guys? There he is. How you doing? We're doing good. Welcome to the live stream, Coral Farm Open House event. Did you see the clams in the back? Uh, I did get a quick look at them. Let's go take a look. Where did the big clam go? Uh, we sold them. So that clam was actually um, an F2 from Biota Palau. Okay. Um, yeah, the thing was uh, aquaculture in Palau. Even though it was so big, um, they're trying to thin down some of their brood stuff. But. So in this in this raceway here is where we have all of our cultured clams. Um, we were very, very fortunate to prepare a batch of, these are called blue squamosa clam. Um, you know, squamosa clams have been in the trade for, in aquaculture for, for many, many years, but uh, the blue variety of squamosa are very, very hard to, to, to procure. So we usually see these clams maybe once every two or three, or sorry, two, two to three times a year. Um, and we usually bring in, you know, 30 or 40 pieces at a time. So along the blue squamosas, we've got some uh, Biota Palau, Daraza clam, We've got some, some really nice Maxima clam here. Um, those are from Micronesia. We've got some Cocos Keeling uh, Maxima clams, cultured Maximus here. We've got some Crocia clams that are cultured in Indonesia as well. And then right here, we've got some more uh, Maxima clam from Cocos Keeling. So Cocos is actually an island off the, the, the west coast of Australia. And they, they grow some amazing, uh, amazing clams produce some amazing clams in aquaculture, so that was great. Yeah, they're beautiful clams. We're, we're really eager and proud to support aquaculture and issue that's all over the world, whether that be in Indonesia um, at, with these clam farms or supporting, you know, companies like Bali Aqua Rich in Indo, um, as well as Biota um, in Palau, um, ORA in Fort Pierce, Florida, um, and a host of other uh, smaller, you know, private um, aquaculture or breeders of, of clownfish and other marine animals. So. Awesome stuff. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, and Kevin, touching on that, I mean, we are definitely, we work with very responsible, sustainable suppliers. Maybe you can go in depth a little more on that, because that's huge. That's what really needs to keep our hobby alive and um, just good for the ecosystem. Definitely. Here, let's, it's pretty noisy in here, so we'll, yeah. we'll stand in front of the okay? So, you know, I've been in this industry for almost 35 years. Um, you know, I started when I was really young, really got into reef keeping, um, uh, kind of on the on the early, you know, the early end of it, probably 82, 83 is when we started to see, um, you know, act actinic 03 lamps. And, you know, I remember All Seas Marine in, um, in Chicago brought in the first wet dry filter or trickle filter. And there were these, there were these trays that would slide out and keep gravel in the trays. And this was a really, you know, different approach from the conventional under gravel filters and, and air stones and, and bleached coral skeletons. So, 
you know, that really opened the door up for reef keeping. Um, reef keeping kind of exploded in the late 90s, um, early 2000s. Um, with, and that was with the, the invent of, of things like high powered lighting systems like metal halide bulbs, um, protein skimmers, foam fractionators, calcium reactors. So really the technology ramped up pretty quickly. Um, but you know, for, for many, many years, the, the marine aquarium trade has been solely dependent on wild harvest. So it's really important that, that we all support as many aquaculture initiatives that we can. And whether that's in suit in, in, in other countries, um, or that's here in the United States. So, you know, this, this tank's a great example because this aquarium started, um, we actually set this tank up um, in March of 2015. And as you can see, I mean, almost all the corals in this tank were, you know, one to two inch coral frags. We did have a couple of larger pieces from, from good friends of mine that are second or third generation aquaculture. But as you can see, you know, Growing corals in a captive environment when done properly, these, these corals can, can really grow quickly. You know, we use this aquarium here to propagate. Um, uh, it's our bird stock, some of it, for the coral frags that we offer in the Diver's Den store on liveaquaria.com. Yeah, just, just massive growth out of some of these pieces of coral. And look at this encrusting coral down here. It's coming up on the glass. It's just beautiful. So this is called Montipara coral. And there's a few different species in here, but why I like putting Montipara at the bottom of, of uh, small polyp stony coral tanks is like you said, Eric, just so these corals kind of grow over the top of each other and it, it creates like a really good carpet all the way across the tank, which is nice look, which is really neat. So we had a question about how many pumps are running on this show tank. That, that's a great question. We have one uh, dart return pump and the, you know, the water flow through the through this sump here is about um, 10 times an hour. Um, it's a very, very simple setup. So. This aquarium has a very large sump, as you can see. It utilizes filter socks, conventional filter socks. How many gallons would you say this sump is, Kevin? Um, it probably holds about 70 gallons of water. Yeah. Um, but obviously, if it's filled up all the way, it would hold much, much more water than that. You can see it's got a float switch right there. It's actually tied into this, this gray pipe right there. Um, it's starting to fill back up. Uh, we did a water change this morning. But basically, it's again a very simple setup. We've got two uh, MP60 uh, Vortex from Ecotech Marine in the back on the corners of the tank. At the bottom, there's two MP40s. So we've got these power heads or these uh, pumps synced so that it creates a really random water flow in the, in the aquarium. So again, you know, really, really high water flow, really simple setup with a sump and a pump. And then the lighting that we employ here um, is conventional 400 watt metal halide lamps. Um, those are uh, some radium bulbs. And then we utilize 120 watt LED blue cannon lights. Um, these are uh, made by uh, Current USA. And they're more of a commercial light. Um, again, they're 120 watts each, but they're, they're basically all blue actinic light. Um, so it really is a, a really aesthetically pleasing to the eye and it's, it's awesome. Uh, light spectrum and intensity to grow these these small polyps so many corals. This it definitely great. does the job. And Kevin, we have a very special yellow tang in here. He's playing a little bit of hide and seek right now, but why don't you tell us about him? What makes him different from the others? So he's actually, I can see him right now. He's right right back there. Oh, yeah. let, let me go grab some food real quick. Okay. Come out. Yeah, he's hiding back there. So where'd you go? Oh, oh there he is right there. Uh, you probably can't see him too well on video. And I don't know if those of you at home heard, uh, this is a 300 gallon show tank. It is massive and it's definitely our pride and joy here at the Coral Farm. All right, sorry about that. So, there's been a lot of foot traffic through here, so a lot of these guys are probably scared, but there he is. There's the yellow tang there. <laughs> now, quit pointing so he actually comes out. Yeah. So, yellow tang are from Hawaii, they're an endemic fish. They're called Zebrasoma flumescens. Um, yellow tangs are obviously all bright yellow. This fish is really unique in that it's an aberration, has an aberration, and that aberration is these black markings on both sides of the fish, which makes it, again, highly unique. Um, we offered this fish for sale for maybe a couple weeks, and then I pulled it off the website, and you know we wanted to, wanted to keep this specimen because he is so unique. Yeah, a very special fish. It looks like he looks like a race car with racing stripes. We call him a highlighter yellow tank because it looks like somebody took a black Sharpie yeah. and, and, and put black stripes on him. 
What's cool though is the fish is actually growing about an inch now and he still has this exact same marking. So I'm pretty confident that even at a full adult, he's still gonna maintain those, those cool black stripes. Do we still have some captive bed yellow tangs? We do. Uh, we've been holding on to them for a while. Um, they're actually in one of the coral uh, raceways together uh, in our large polyps winning coral raceways. I'd love to show everybody those. And speaking of captive bred yellow tangs, I got the, the pleasure and honor of meeting Chad Callen last week yep. down at the Aquatic Experience. Very, very nice guy. And as a former hairstylist, I had to tell him how cool his hair was. <laughs> just a super intelligent guy and just out there, you know, for a great cause. Yeah, it's people like Chad that are that are breaking new ground and, and you know, breaking barriers um, at, at the Oceanic Institute in Hawaii. So Chad was the first um, first person to successfully spawn and rear uh, and raise to commercial scale uh, these yellow tang, these zebrasoma fulvescens. And you know he, he had had some help from a few people as well, and, and some really good funding and support from Rising Tide. Um, you know, Rising Tide is a fantastic organization. Um, they're, they're a 501c3. It's run by uh, a wonderful lady named Judy St. Ledger. Um, and we're really proud to help support Rising Tide initiatives. Um, Rising Tide basically raises funding um, to provide um, grants for aquaculture, for marine ornamental aquaculture, for our aquarium trade. So it's a really great, great program. Um, I'd encourage everyone to check out the Rising Tide Facebook page. Um, a lot of great information on there. And, and again, they support a lot of these ornamental aquaculture initiatives around the country. So back to Chad and OI and Hawaii. There's a cool fish in my office. You guys have showed oh, yeah. it to you before. The captive bred Hawaiian cleaner wrasse. Yeah. Uh, and you can see how big he's getting now. So. You guys get a sneak peek at the coolest office in the world. <laughs> so I'll put a little bit of food in here as well. Um, you know, when I got this fish in, I think it was January, late January, early February of this year, um, this this guy was much far less than an inch. So um, now he's he's actually growing up pretty well, and I'm not sure where he is. So well, while we're waiting for him to come out, Kevin, is this a bounce mushroom down there? Yeah, this is. This is uh, what's called a bounce mushroom. Um, it's just a variety of, of of different types of mushrooms. It's called an interstellar mushroom right here from Australia. Um, here's another colony of bounce mushrooms that I've had for a, a few years now. So some great stuff. <laughs> So in this in this section here, I've got a pair of uh, of Centropygi colini, uh, which is really cool. There's a big There's fat candy bass up there. Um, he's pretty cryptic, kind of comes in and out of the rocks. This fish here is called Cirrolabris erli, that pink guy with the stripes on him. And then what's really neat, my favorite fish, Anapsis femininus, he's in the corner back there. Um, it's pretty cool because that fish actually transitioned um, into a male. So, oh yeah, you know, a, a lot of wrasse are, are, are directional hermaphrodites, um, or even bidirectional hermaphrodites. So they can actually change sex from female to male. Nature. <laughs> Got my still have my pair of uh, of Venusta angel or purple mast angelfish here. Um, there's another pair of them in here as well, and then the Collins pair on the right there. There's the cleaner ass right there. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah, he's beautiful. Uh, so he must have been back cleaning some fish. There he, is. <laughs> he was working. But what's interesting is that fish has really taken on a, a massive growth spurt lately. So you know, yeah, it really didn't grow too much for maybe yeah. the first six months. But uh, over the last few months, he's really just taken off. So. I was going to say, I haven't seen him probably over a month. And yeah, he's definitely bigger. So that's one of the only um, captive bred Hawaiian cleaner ass in the, in the country. Um, there's very few of them that were ever produced. There's very few of them that ever went into trade. So I'm, I'm really proud to, to have and you know have the ability to actually own and, and condition this fish. Um, it was actually produced by Avier uh, Montavo. So Avier was a you know another groundbreaker in, in marine ornamental aquaculture um, with this fish right here. So it's great. What what else is cool? I want to show you some clownfish that are really really neat. So in this aquarium here, there's uh, these are called Ritteri anemones, but the clownfish in there is a new strain of clownfish called Black Storm clownfish. Um, they're very, very, very unique um, and a little bit pricey. So we procured some of these this week, and, and we'll condition these guys up, and you know eventually offer some for sale in the Divers Den store on Live Aquaria. 
But as you can see, they've got some really, really interesting markings yeah. across their face. Um, they're, they're relatively young still. The, that brownish color will turn jet black over time okay. um, as they grow. And that's what makes them so unique with that really dark black and, and white contrast. So Those are absolutely beautiful. Really cool. They're, I think Stunning. we've got eight fish total in here. So Really? Oh, there's, there's those they're animals. really in there. There's this pair. There's a pair in my office. And then there's a couple pairs out in the, in the coral farm as well. So. Awesome, yeah. This tank here has got some, some unique fish as well. Uh, these are called Madagascar anemone fish. They're amphiprae and a lot of fasciatus. And that's a, a unique fish in, in the marine aquarium trade because we just don't see many fish um, exported out of Madagascar here in the United States. So, um, Got a few shipments of Madagascar fish in over the last few months. Uh, the, the primary target export species is, is uh, gem tang, zebra summa gematum. Um, in the past, gem tangs were only available from Mauritius, uh, which is off the east coast of Africa. But uh, Madagascar is starting to, to, to ship in um, infrequent shipments here into the US. And this, this is an endemic species of clownfish to Madagascar, Lata fasciata. Awesome. As you can see, they love their anemones. You know, it's not critical that you keep clownfish with anemones, but the, but they do prefer, um, you know, to, to, to be in the same aquarium as an anemone. If you're an inexperienced hobbyist, a marine hobbyist, and you're, you're just starting to get into the hobby, if you've got sufficient light, you've got a stable environment, and you really want an anemone, the, the first anemone to, to, to try would, would be a bulb tip anemone because they're, they're much more adaptable um, than these hat and eye carpets here. Bulb tip anemones come in green and red and orange and a variety of colors. So, yeah, we can show you some more of those out in the uh, coral farm. Let's shift gears here for a second. We've got a we've got a gorgeous planted tank we set up out here in the lobby about five six weeks ago. So we've got current lights on top. And these plants are all from the folks at Tropica. And what's great about Tropica plants is they're raised in a sterile environment. They come to us in a cup, so you don't have algae. There's no pests, no snails, or anything like that. And these things are just exploding. We do run a little CO2 in here. That always helps. This tank is, I believe it's about a 50 gallon tank. At least 45, yeah. 45, 50. It's a gorgeous tank. It's got the bent glass, the rounded edges. But yeah, this plant, this planted tank is just taken off. And we will upload on the website some time-lapse photos from day one. So this aquarium actually has CO2. Um, you know, for successful planted aquariums, carbon dioxide on a, P, on a pH controller, um, and then obviously the Tropica fertilizer we add um, once a week. But, you know, as Eric was saying, this, this tank has just exploded in growth. It's you know, pretty impressive how, number one, how clean and sterile these plants are because you're not introducing pests like snails and other things into your planted display, but these, these plants are just growing like crazy. So really, really cool. We, we've, you know, obviously historically not been into planted aquaria. Um, you know, we've started to offer, excuse me, freshwater fish in the Diver's Den store on Live Aquaria, and we offer the entire line of Tropica um, on liveaquaria.com under, under aquarium plants. And our co-worker Patrick did a great job setting this up. He's got it's good contrast in there. So again, like Kevin said, this is kind of a new venture for us. We're going to see where the live plants go, and maybe we'll start bringing some more in down the road. Let's go back out to the coral farm. So we've got some more clams up here. Looks like we've got some jurassics, squamosas, maximas. The clams on the dark substrate have probably been shot and taken pictures of, and they're probably on the Diver's Den website. Yeah, these don't close up like the big one does. It's too bad we don't have the big Durasa anymore. He was about the size of a football, and when he closed up, he rippled the surface. Actually, would shoot water out of the surface. Very cool. So we had a really quick question uh, from Shane. He was wondering how many, and we might have to connect with Shasta on this one. Uh, how many different species of seahorses we have in the house? That is a good question. Um, I apologize, Shane. I'm primarily in freshwater, so I don't always know. 
but I know we get at least two to three different species of, of seahorses. Yeah. If we run into Shasta, we'll definitely let yeah, you know Shasta. we'll look for Shasta. She is the queen. Got some nice pieces in here, some frog spawn, we got some slipper coral, a little bit of everything. And again, these are on the dark substrate, so they photograph well, they'll go up on the website. We have uh, three people that work in our diver's den photography studio, and they take a lot of pictures all day long, and then they format and upload the images every night. And they really, they do not tweak the color at all, they just format for size, because we are all about what you see is what you get. So we want uh, the buyer to get an accurate representation or the exact thing that they are purchasing online. So let's take a walk over and take a look at some of our inverts. So yeah, you guys are actually getting kind of a extended behind the scenes tour. I think the first two groups, they're done. So. All your reef keepers know these. Red fire shrimp, gorgeous. They've got a nice size to them. Just love the contrast, the white and the red. Got a spiny blue lobster in here. Oh, wow. Very cool. And your skunk cleaner shrimp. These are beautiful, these harlequin shrimp. Oh, yeah. Got a nice little red sea, a purple tang. There's a really small one in here. He's about the size of a quarter. Don't get much cuter than that. <laughs> then we've got something See? special over here. These are our very own captive hatched. Oh yeah. Bamboo cat sharks. So we got all of these in as eggs. Uh, probably two months ago and they have all hatched out slowly over time so they're anywhere from six weeks to maybe two weeks old uh, and, li and like the epaulette sharks they're eating mice, chopped up silver sides chopped up krill again an another great shark for the home aquaria because they don't require massive space however you wouldn't want to put them in a small tank these will get about two to three feet long but they're very striking as juveniles just a beautiful mellow fish Got some plate corals in here. These are beautiful too, these Duncans. It's a nice sized bubble coral there. Good stuff. Take a look over here again. Man, all sorts of, we've got frog spawns. Here's some nice elegance corals in here. Got some real gorgeous hammers. So these are all connected to our LPS system. So in here we've got a lot of bubble tip anemones. We've got green, orange, rose. So we keep them in the basket so we keep them elevated so they get the proper light. And as Kevin mentioned earlier, these are fairly hardy anemones. It's a good place to start. Look at this one. His bulbs are orange and then the center is green. Yeah. Got some sea fans in here. Some more mushrooms and zoanthids. Got some torch coral. And some sponge. Got a big beautiful angel back here. He's in the corner. He's probably not too happy with us right now. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's a big scribbled angel. There you go, what a beautiful animal. Here are the captive bred yellow tanks we were referencing earlier. In there with the gorgeous passer angel. You can see they're really starting to get their yellow now. 
in with all the mushrooms. Little urchin on the side here. Oh yeah. That's a thing there he is. Where should we take everybody now, Ian? Well, I think we had another. Uh, those uh, uh, those seahorses are like they're popular. Let's take them back right. over there. We'll go back to Maybe we can run into Shasta. I don't see her. She's so busy today. Here's the seahorses. Let me see if Shasta's in house. Well, we're going to try to find Shasta. She's our resident seahorse expert. Hopefully, try to answer some of the questions about how many species and anything else you guys might have. Real busy here today, huh? So, also, we do a ton of coral propagation. So we have all sorts of frags here. Uh, we have an upstairs. Maybe we can take a sneak peek up there. It's basically a nursery, and all we do is frag coral. So we keep a lot of brood stock upstairs, and we do a lot and a lot of fragging. So you can see we've got everything here from Stylopora, different types of Acropora, Montipora. Let's walk around Ian because we've got a lot of Acropora up down. So we'll go Let's down do this raceway. So we've got a lot of Acropora down here. So all of these have a ring on them. So we have to inventory them when we come in. So on the ring there's identification. Uh, stating what day they came in and basically where they're from. So these are not on the system right now. Basically these are in quarantine. We're just making sure everybody's doing all right. As you can see, we've just got thousands of corals here, literally. Some more frags over here. Bird's nest, everything. You name it, hopefully we've got it. That just keep, keeps going and going. It does. Looks like we've got some brood stock there. And what you folks at home don't realize is there's a lot a lot of maintenance and cleaning that goes on with these. We're constantly scraping these vats. We take these frag plugs out, we clean them. Uh, fortunately, we have a resident coral expert. Her name is Tina. She does all the propagation. and She does a fantastic job. So when you're buying those frags that go on the website, she's whipping them up a couple weeks before, and then when they're looking good, when they've encrusted, or if they're soft coral, when they've attached to that plug or pad, that's all Tina's hard work. And of course, she's got some helpers as well. So kudos to everybody. Yeah, uh, and kudos to people like Chris. You know, he just chimed in, said he gets all of his fish from, uh, he thanked us for doing the live stream, and he said he gets all of his fish from Live Aquaria. So big thanks, Chris, people like yourself, who, uh, who are enjoying the, you know, the fruits of our labor. Yeah, we, and, love, uh, we love to open our doors, so to speak, because yeah. typically we're not open to the public. Three times a year we'll do open houses, and uh, it's, it's just great. You know, there, there's a lot of pride here. I'm very proud of our facility, and I'm excited to bring everybody at home the coral farm. Yeah. It's just, it's fantastic. And, and what we were talking about earlier, just the juxtaposition, the fact that we're in the north woods of Wisconsin, a.k.a. God's country, it's just incredible to have this facility here. It's just, it's, it's, it's almost a paradox. So, you know, I've, I've been into fish a long time. If any of you out there are from southeast Wisconsin, I grew up in Waukesha. I worked at a tropical fish fair, 
fish store there owned by the late great Tom Getter. It was called the Aquatic Emporium, the fish store. It's no longer there. Uh, when I was younger, I went by the name of Rick, so you might recognize me. So my hat goes off to Tom. He was a mentor to me. I learned so much about fish and coral and, and just the trade. And, you know, I just, I have a lot of high regard for Tom, and I miss him. You know, he passed away a couple years ago. So then one of the subsequent owners was Dan Bradish, and he did a great job too. So, like I said, the fish have been a part of my life forever. I've done other, other things. I worked in the corporate world. I worked in the printing business, so my hat goes off to anybody who works in print. I've done it all from pre-press imaging to account management, it's crazy. And then when I got my son off to college, I went to school and learned how to do hair. I did hair for five years in the Milwaukee area. And now I'm just, it's full circle. Yep. I'm back now to Now we fish got you here and, the things and all I love. of your expertise and your experience. Well, Kevin's the expert. Oh, you're great though. Come on, don't sell yourself short. I don't know everything. <laughs> I don't pretend to know everything. So when I get quiet, that's because I don't know what I'm talking about and I don't want to <laughs> pretend I know what I'm talking about. So, um, Alex, I really wanted to give a shout out to you as well. You, uh, you were appreciating the, what we're doing here, and um, you mentioned Q and A. We're actually going to be doing a live Q and A with Kevin Cohen yeah. and Eric. Um, that should be next Thursday, I believe. I think so. so That's we'll what we're we'll that, for. Yeah, we'll be streaming that live on Facebook. So it'll be about an hour. It should be at least an hour. And uh, we did one of these, I think, back in September. And. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing it next Thursday. So uh, there'll be an event page going up, or there'll be an event set up on Facebook going up for uh, for you guys to sign up and show interest, and uh, as well as field your questions to us in an early state. Absolutely. And we can kind of you know sort of get the get you get your questions answered as quickly as possible. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. Next Thursday, I believe that would be the 16th. Um, we're going to be live with uh, Kevin Cohen taking your questions. Yeah, looking forward to that, and I think that will. Uh Kevin will definitely have to take over there because he is, talk about a fish geek and a coral nerd. He knows it all. And you know what's awesome about Kevin? He's just, he's an all around good person. Yeah. This place could not have a better director. He's so transparent. He's so good to his employees. Everybody knows what's going on and he explains the, the how, the why, and the what of what we're doing here. And he's always willing to teach you something. Um, just a great guy. I just feel very, Honored and blessed to be a part of this. So here we've got a beautiful tank. So um, you know, I think we're getting kind of. I think we're getting ready to wrap this up. Maybe let's try to find one more really cool thing to show these guys. One more really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You guys, so here's the ladies on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. These these are some of the really awesome people here that are, are you know fulfilling your orders and really making sure that all the quality uh, the aquatic livestock is going out as the best it can be. So. Big props to you guys. You guys are awesome. And say hi to the live stream. Hi. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Some more people over there. They don't. They're they're shy. And, and here's our always trailing behind us, ever working, Kelvin. Hey. <laughs> Just modding here. <laughs> well, welcome to the marine world, Alex. We're great to have you. And if you have any questions, there's Michael. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Another great uh, team member here on the so, live query team. Michael works in husbandry and coral propagation. He's one of the hard workers here. Everybody here has a job to do and a very important job to do, whether they're looking over the corals for pests or, or monitoring the, the waters, the, the, I apologize, the salinity, the pH, alkalinity. Everybody plays a very important role here at Live Aquarium. So with that said, I think we're going to wrap things up. Um, Elizabeth, get a hold of me through customer service and we'll, we'll take care of you in that geo if you're interested. And I think that's about all I got today. Again, I just want to thank all my coworkers. Everybody worked very hard this week to just clean everything up and just get this place in tip top shape. Thanks again to Kevin, Kelvin, and Ian. So from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Let's see a turnaround here. There, there, that's me. <laughs> All right, people. We're Thanks, gonna guys. Off. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. And check out our Divers Den deep dive episodes. And we've got a lot of footage that was shot last week down at the Aquatic Experience in Schaumburg, Illinois. We're yeah. looking forward to that next year. We'll be in New Jersey. That should be fun. That so. should be fun. Thanks All a lot. Right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you.